Let me know and I'm going to get the slide up here. Can everyone see the slide? Again, you go down to two, individual user, then you choose my name, Melissa Armo. Got it? So today we're going to talk about advanced technical analysis in GAPS. <laughs> Welcome everyone, my name is Melissa Armo. If you have questions, you can type it in the room. And if I want to go back and forth with the charts, I may do that as well. If I decide to do that, I will let you know because I will have to stop the projection and then repost it on the chart. So we may do that, we may not do that, I'm just letting you know. Does everybody know how to type any questions? Hello, is anyone there? Let me know if you know how to chat questions. I'm going to be talking today probably about between 45 minutes and an hour. And again, if people come in late, I'll let them in. If you're here, you have questions, that's fine. Some of you are familiar with what I do. I see some familiar faces. Some people are new. Um, David, have you been following me, David? Or are you new to what I do? Ivan, I recognize you. Paulette, I think you're new. Steven, you've been around. Steven's trading options with me. Ryan, I don't recognize your name. Are you new or have you been following me a while too? Again, feel free to chat in the room. David's new. Okay, great. All right, well, you'll learn a little bit today. See if you're interested. See if you have any questions. And stay or as long as you want. Um, but we probably won't go after five o'clock. Anyways, we're going to talk today about technical analysis. And this is me. If you've seen me on TV, you know what I look like. If you've been following me for a while, you can follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. I have lots and lots of videos on YouTube, which you can watch. If you have questions, you can always call me at 929-3200-GAP, or you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. And again, I have been trading since, gosh, 2008. Really, really feels like a long time that I've been trading, but actually it seems like I knew how to do this forever, but I did not know how to trade when I first started out. I lost money when I first started out. I did not know what I was doing, and most people don't know what they're doing when they first start trading. So it's not like anybody wakes up and they all of a sudden start making money the first time they trade. It takes time to learn how to do this, it is a process, and I, I find a lot of people get frustrated with the process. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the process of learning. Go through the steps to do it. You know, again, if this is something that you should find enjoyable where you want to do it and you want to get better and you want to learn more. And again, I do talk on TV about the market. This is me on Cheddar. I also talk about stocks. I talk about the economy. Now, there are times when the economy does something, we might have data, and then the market reacts exactly like you think it's going to. So we could have bad data, and then the market sells off. Or we could have good data, and then the market rallies. But that is not always the case. So it is not always the case that the economy or the market data uh, goes exactly with the market. So what I do is based on technical analysis. It's actually not based on fundamentals. Sometimes the fundamentals match up, but not always. And so that's the tricky thing. You know, people want to look at the fundamentals and then immediately make a decision on whatever they're doing. You can't always do that. You're not always going to get the matchup exactly. It would be very easy to trade if we said, oh, we have bad economic data. We had a bad report, a, a bad inflation report. Let's short, short the world. If it would be that easy to make trading decisions, then guess what? No one ever would ever lose money trading. But it isn't the case, okay? So I developed a method to look at charts or what is price analysis in the gap. And that is what we're going to talk about today. And of course, we're going to talk about making money because trading is a great summer job. Right now it's summer. Hard to believe we got another, but probably about another month, maybe six weeks or so of time that we can trade and make money. And then it's going to be fall 
and then it's going to be fall earnings season. And so, of course, guess what? You know, a lot of people are back to work. Some people are working from home. Some people are out of the jobs. But training is a good part-time job because you do not have to sit at your desk for six and a half hours a day or eight hours a day like a normal job and trade. Even when I'm doing options, I'm in the trade, put the trade on. If you can't watch it, you can put sell order. You don't have to watch it. You can just put an immediate sell order. If you wanna watch it, you can. But for my day trades, I'm usually in and out very, very quickly in a couple of minutes. So again, trading is a great summer job and a great job in general because of the fact that you do not have to sit at your desk all day. And of course you have weekends off. So when you trade, you have one goal, one goal, and that is to make money. And again, a lot of people start trading and they're losing and they're not making money and then they do it every day anyways, like they're playing a video game or something. You have to take this seriously. You should not trade if you don't have a strategy. And a lot of people uh, you ask me questions about different things like my option subscription service, the trading room. It's great if you uh, subscribe to a subscription service if you want to. But if you have no idea why that person or that service is calling the trades that you're doing, I mean, how can you possibly take the trades? And many, many people end up having subscription services to places and then there there's no strategy there's absolutely no strategy whatsoever at all for the person that there is ca actually calling the trades so again it's the whole idea where you will follow me if you decide to come with me you will follow me in what i do if you want to learn what i do you take the class if you don't want to learn what i do you have to follow me to the letter in the subscriptions of the trades because I'm using a set strategy to call the trades and do the trades. And again, that's what we're going to talk about today. When we're going to talk about gaps. So I'm showing in here the results for this is the beginning of 2023. Hard to believe. Again, here we are midway through uh, August. Tomorrow is August 15th. We will be halfway through the month of August as of tomorrow. Again, seven and a half months through the year, it's almost the holidays. In a few months, it's really hard to believe. So far, the results for the day trade run this year, this was through Friday, we've almost hit 400,000. Almost hit. So again, these are the stats year to date from January to, the, to basically last Friday, $399,095. This is with an advanced trader risk. You could risk more, you could risk less, but it has been a great start to 2023. Okay, so when I'm getting up in the morning, I'm making decisions for what I'm doing, but I make it up one day and I may decide that there's nothing that I want to trade. And then I may go through my process and say, I'm going to take the day off. Or I may get up in the morning, I may say, there's three things I want to trade today and I'm going to do all three. So again, I never know from day to day to day what I'm going to trade or when I'm going to do it. But trading requires a positive attitude, and that may be difficult. If you've been attempting to trade or trying to trade for a very long time, and you've been losing money, it may be hard for you to think positive. And if I've here heard all the stories, but I want to tell you right now, you must be positive. You must be your best friend and your own cheerleader when you're going into the market and you're trading, because really, the market doesn't care if you win or lose. So if you're not going to be your best friend and your own cheerleader to be positive and think that you can do it and make money and be successful, then you've got everything against you because you already have people against you in the market because you already have people that actually want your money, that want to take your money into the market. Remember, when you go in and you take a trade, you're not really knitting a sweater and selling it, okay, to somebody out on the street. You're just taking money from somebody across the aisle in another trade. Every time you make money, somebody else is losing. And every time that person makes money, you're probably losing. So there's one winner and one loser on every single side of the trade. And that's what the market is. Uh, like the, from the movie Wall Street, Gordon Gecko, it's a zero sum game. That's pretty much what it is, okay? So the person that is right is the person that's gonna win. So your objective always in every single solitary day is guess what, to be right, to be right. That is your objective, that's what you're trying to do. That is what you want to do. So in order to become successful, you need a system, okay, and you need a niche. And that is what I've developed. That's what I've developed. And again, I started doing this in 2008, but it took me about three years to develop my system. 
It is not impossible, but if you're starting out from scratch and you have no system, then you either have to pay and learn somebody else's system. If you come and learn my class, you learn mine, or you have to create your own. And the way that I did it was through actually live trading real cash, okay? So, you know, I mean, you're not gonna really get a feel for it, whether it's something works or not if you're trading on a demo. You must trade real live money to see if something's gonna work or not. You do not have to trade big size. Like the, like the stats that I showed you, in order to earn $400,000 so far in the first seven and a half months of this year, you can have as big of an account as you want, but if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to meet those figures. You're not going to meet those numbers. And again, I've been doing this for 15 years. You can make money trading with 100, share, 100 shares of something. You can make money doing options with one contract. Okay, I have people that are doing it. And again, I say start out slow and be reasonable with what you're doing. If you're risking $500 a trade on one contract, for example, or in, a, in an option per se, $250 with 50% return investment, that is a good solid trade. That's a good winner. If you take four trades, okay, for example, and they're winners, that's $1,000 or $250 at 50%. That's good. Say you have one loser in the week. So then you take off the loser, then guess what? You're still up for the week. That's still positive, and that's with only a $500 risk. Because again, it's about having more winners than losers. You have to, have to, have to, have to have more winners than losers in order to be successful. And again, any questions as we're going along, you can plop it in the room. But you can make money in the market. People do it all the time. It's just that not everyone does. And if I had this, if someone said to me, why do you think so many people lose money? The number one reason why people lose money is actually they're taking the direction in their position wrong. And if someone said, why do people do that, Melissa? I would say because they don't have a strategy. So they have no idea where they're going long and they have no idea where they're shorting. For example, today, today is a good example, actually. The market rallied today. People went long. Why? Today was a terrible placement in the market to go long. Absolutely, 100%. Terrible, terrible idea bad idea we did not go on the market today horrible trade and yet you could have made money in this trade today so you could take a bad trade you could take 10 trades 10 bad trades two could make you money and eight could lose you're upside down you're down in your account if you do that but because two times it worked people will do it do it do it even if they're losing most of the time do you follow me so again, most people lose money because they're taking trades in the wrong direction. And if I say, why are people taking trades in the wrong direction? It's because they have no reason to do those trades. They have no idea. If somebody went long today, they have no idea why they went long. They couldn't tell me at all why they did it. And if someone said, because you were buying, uh, buying the dip, I'm, I'm going to tell you that that is not a strategy. That is not a strategy at all. And it doesn't work consistently in the market or to trade stocks, even in things that are in an uptrend. So ultimately you need a good system to succeed and you have to follow it daily and you can't veer from it. Because again, if you veer off of that system, okay, then you are going to have difficulties or if you don't have a system at all, you're gonna have difficulties too. So what do I do? Well, my strategy focuses on gaps. So again, if I get up in the morning, I'm looking for the best gap every single solitary day. And I'm gonna to explain to you what a gap is in a minute Again, this is a review for some of you. Some of you have been following me, so you know, but I focus on gaps and I'm looking to, to short gaps. So I focus on the short side, on the downside of things. Why? Because I found that that gives me a niche because many people do not know how to short. They don't know how to short well. Also, things tend to fall big and fast, more so than they rally, okay? because of something called panic, which we're gonna talk about a little bit too. But I focus on the fast moves, I focus on the volatility, and I focus on the short side when I'm trading. Now, this is a chart of Tesla. So let's talk about what is a gap. Again, there are most, every single day, something gaps in the market or the market gaps. Things gap up, things gap down. I will go long, but I mostly focus, like I said, on the short side. Now, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Here's an example, Tesla. I'm going back here to July. Tesla closed at one price at four o'clock and opened at a different price at 9.30. So what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So it closed at four at one price and opened lower at a different price at 9.30. So what is technical analysis? Technical analysis is looking at past price data to predict future price data. 
And that is what I do. And if you come and learn and take my class, that's what you're going to learn from me. So I predicted on this particular day, again, I'm going back to July just as an example here, that Tesla would fall, 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 fall in the gap down. Now, can you always short gap downs? No. Can you always go long gap ups? No. Can you always short gap ups? No. Can you always go long gap downs like in the market today? No. No, you can't. Again, you're looking for a specific, specific, specific gap in order to make the determination to be able to predict the direction. And again, this is what I do. So there's two basic things you're going to learn here. One is what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Okay, so that's what that is. Then we have to go through the process of determining if this gap down in Tesla is in fact going to drop or is it going to rally? And that is the genius in what I go through my process in doing. And again, why do I prefer to short? Well, you can see the big fat bar here in Tesla. You can see the big giant bar. And again, this was back on the 20th, 20th of July. So we're not quite a month away from that, but you can see how, take it over. Again, we're on the daily chart. This is around 280. You can see how this has fallen off ever since. So actually, you could have done a swing trade short in Tesla too. You could have actually shorted Tesla as a swing trade or done a longer term put in this. It has sold off ever since that particular day. There was a very good gap. And we did, we did short that, okay? But also talking about, again, momentum and movements to the downside. So again, what is a gap? I'm taking everything off the daily chart. We were just looking at Tesla. We were looking at the daily chart. So a gap is a difference between the close and the open. Stocks gap most every single day, but not every gap is a good gap or what I call a golden gap. So I coined my term, my whole system, the golden gap, because it's like finding gold in the market. But again, things gap every day. It doesn't mean I'm playing everything every day, not even in the trend. I'm looking for gaps that are predictable. Okay. And how do I do that? I do that using my rating system. So again, what is a gap? This is a chart of the SPY. Let's take a look at it. Let's go back. Again, we can go back to the beginning of August. Stock close here, gap down. Again, this is the ETF for the S&P. Closed here, gap down, fell. Boom. So again, the SPY gap down, and you could have shorted this, or you could have done a put. Okay? So again... The market is something that you can do many, many different ways. You can do puts in the market. You can short the market on margin. You could do swing trades as well in the overall market. There's many, many different ways to trade the market. If you don't like the price of the SPY right now to trade it on margin, you can buy a put that is a cheaper way to do a short, which is really basically the same thing, okay? Or you can do it as a day trade. But everything that I'm doing is based on momentum. So I'm looking for momentum in the gap in order to make money. All right. So I was having a conversation with someone the other day about, you know, what do you pay for this option? When do you get in? This thing and that thing. If I call a trade on the options newsletter at 7 a.m. in the morning, I can't take that trade till after 930. OK, you cannot trade options in the pre-market. You have to wait till the open to enter the trade. So I get in the trade in the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of the day. I get in it pretty quickly. The whole idea is not to scalp options. We're not trying to make 25 cents unless it costs 25 cents. If I'm paying $2 for an options trade, for example, I'm trying to make a dollar or more. So whether I pay 175, 180, or 215 for that trade, if that trade goes and it gets momentum and it drops and it falls and it sells off, like Tesla, like the spot, like the examples I'm showing you here in the daily charts of these of these stocks, you're going to make money. OK, so again, momentum is a big move. That is the whole point of pinpointing on the daily chart what we're trying to get. And again, this is all based on price action based on the gap. So again, let's talk about a little bit here about momentum. So if you have a thousand shares and again, this is if you are doing a day trade. So if you do a day trade, you have to have a margin account to do it. If you have a thousand shares of a stock and you short it and it drops a dollar, how much will you make? A thousand dollars. Say you short it at ten dollars, drops to nine, you have a thousand shares, boom, you get in, get out, quick. You would need a margin account to do a trade like that. Okay. 
If you have a thousand shares of a stock and you short it and it drops 10 cents, how much are you gonna make a hundred dollars? I say, okay, fine, that's a hundred bucks. But which would you rather make? You obviously would rather make the thousand risking whatever you're gonna risk, depends on the stop. And we're gonna talk about the difference between the entering the stop in a little bit here. But it's the whole point. If you can make $100 in five minutes or $1,000 in five minutes, of course, you'd rather make the 1000 Then your day can be done really, really quick. It's the idea of getting the momentum and getting it into the open quick, 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 as fast as you can get it. Or really, if you want to hold it longer from 930 to 4, you can get it. But it's the idea of playing momentum, not waiting, 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 waiting for something to go. And again, a lot of people that are trading the market, one of the other mistakes that they make is they may take five trades and maybe they're all profitable. 10 cents, 5 cents, 15 cents, 25 cents, 30 cents. But then they may have just as many losers or they may have two or three losers. And those losers are way bigger than the winners because the winners that they have really don't go that big. Does that make sense? So trading momentum is key. It's key when you're doing day trades, like this example here, but it is also really, really key when you're doing options. Because when you're doing options, if you take a trade on a Monday that's an options trade that expires on a Friday, you got five days to that thing expires. And preferably, you're going to get a move in that and you could be able to get out of that trade before the expiration date. You don't really want to hold something to the last day. You want to get a momentum move in an option so that it can pay you, okay? The whole purpose of trading options is to get the momentum which is why it makes them profitable if you're if you're just getting a little bit here a little bit there every day you're losing losing time value in an option and it's just going to be really really difficult for you to make money and unless it moves so a lot of people look at so many different things with options if you if you're trading the option and you're getting the momentum you're fine okay you're going to get it you're going to get the trade it's going to go and you're gonna be profitable, whether it happens on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. If it hardly moves at all for Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, say for example, for three days, if we do it on a Monday, it, you know, it could even be going in your favor and you could even be down if it's hardly, hardly moving, okay? Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, the key to day trading stocks successfully is using a system. So you will trade a system that sets up daily with a high level of predictability in the directional move. Trade a system that works independently of the market and does not need the market with it to work. This is another thing as well. If I take a trade, for example, and it has it's, it's a good gap and I don't need the market, I'm great, I'm golden. If I take a trade and it's with the market, it may reverse if the market reverses in the gap. So I'm trying to look, you know, 95% of the time to find things that do not need the market, okay? Because if you need the market every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you either better read the market direction and predict where the market's gonna go correctly or you're not gonna make money, okay? And the market can be tricky. Many times the market seems like it's gonna go up and then it reverses. We had that last week. The market flipped last week. Thursday, particularly, the market rallied and then completely fell off. And, and that, that caught a lot of people that were long off guard and then it sold off and then we sold off on Friday morning. And actually we sold off today in the morning before we flipped too, okay? But success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system. Again, why do people take trades in the wrong direction? Because they don't have a system. So then you need a system, but you still need a good system and you still need a system that has more winners and losers. So for me, my niche is really shorting. It's trying to get the fast move. It's trying to get the downward move. It's trying to get the sell off. And, and again, this, this is one of the reasons why I'm able to sometimes get in trades so quickly too. So sometimes I'm in my trade at 931, 932, 935, 934, and then I'm out in five minutes, okay? So whether or not there's an FOMC announcement, whether or not the you know, administration has an economic data, whatever it is, I'm in, I'm done, I'm out of the train before anything even happens. So getting in and out quickly, it also counts too. And if you're trying to be like everyone else, buying the dip or buying support, which is exactly what happened in the market today, overall, even if it would have paid off today, even if you would have made money going long today, the market and a gap down on support, you still overall will lose doing that. In order to have outstanding results, you have to be different with what you're doing. And when I say different, I mean different in relationship to what most day traders are doing. 
most day traders lose. Again, there's many reasons for that. I gave you a few or what I find are the, are, are the most valid ones, the most common ones, okay? But, but the thing is that when people are back and forth attempting to trade for, I'm gonna say five years or five years or more, people then get down that it can't be done. But it's the fact that people are going with the crowd of traders that aren't doing well. So my method is designed and based on not following the crowd of day traders, but following institutional money. And I'm telling you right now that institutional money is not buying this market, which is exactly why we did not go long today and why I'm not long the market, all right? If you follow institutional money, you're gonna have a higher success rate. You're gonna be able to make more money. You will be in things that have larger moves where you could keep your risk low, medium, or big, okay? And you get a big move. Again, Tesla was a good example of that. That was sold off with institutional money in that gap in that particular day that I just talked about. But there's one reason why people often get confused reading gap direction. It, it, people just get tripped up with it because again, a lot of people want to trade gap fills and that does not work consistently either. But my niche again, like I said, is shorting. And it's shorting using the daily chart. And I look at the daily chart and I'm looking at technical analysis and what is technical analysis? Technical analysis is using past price data to predict future price data. Like if you said to me, Melissa, okay, where do you think Tesla is gonna be between now and tomorrow morning? Or between if I got up tomorrow morning and it was 9 a.m. and you said, tell me where Tesla is gonna be by four o'clock today. And then I would give you an estimate based on where Tesla is gapping tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. when I roll out of bed, okay? And so that advantage to be able to predict where it's going to go, whether it's in six and a half hours or whether it's in five days, if we're trading an option, really is quite beneficial because you really don't know what's gonna happen with the economic data. You don't know what the fundamental reports are gonna say. You have no idea what the earnings are gonna be on anything when they come out. The earnings are tomorrow morning in HD and Home Depot. I have no idea what those earnings are going to say. I am not in Home Depot. I'm not long it. I'm not short it. I have no idea what it's going to do at all. But I will know tomorrow when I see the gap in it if I want to go long or if I want to go short. So I wait for the gap to occur. And then I look at the chart. I look at the price of the data on the chart using past price data to predict where and again, I'm just using HD as an example where it's going to go tomorrow if we, in fact, decide to play it, okay? Any questions here as I'm going along? Anyways, my niche is gaps and also shorting. So again, I'm hoping that HD is a good gap down, but I don't know. I might go along it tomorrow if it's a good gap up. We'll see. But I would prefer to short because I do prefer to short. So how can you make money shorting? You make money when the stock price drops. Okay, you're not, if something doesn't fall, you're not going to make any money if you're short it. In fact, you'll lose, okay? So again, it has to go down. Now, who can short? Anybody. Anybody can short it all. So you can buy a put. You don't have to have a margin account to buy a put. You have to have an options account. You have to have a cash account, or you can have an, a margin account as an options account. But anybody can buy a put, which is basically shorting in an option. Now, if you want to short where you press the button on your uh, uh keyboard to short, you have to have a margin account to day trade short in and out. Like I said, where you'd short something and you get the drop in a dollar and you get out, anyone can short as long as you have the account to set up it as a short and you have to call your broker to set it up, okay? Retail traders and professional traders can short. If you don't have 25000 in a retail account, you may be restricted where you can't get in and out, in and out every single day as much as you want then you can do options, set up a cash account, or you have the 25,000 or more, or you can open up what's called a prop account. You can open up a prop account at a prop trading firm where you can open it up with $2,500 or even $5,000, you will get 10 to one margin. You will be able to short. So that's a way to uh, short on a margin account with less than 25,000. Those options are available to people now. Or again, you buy puts, okay? But these trades that we're doing set up fast. They go fast. They go quick. We're usually done quick and early in the morning. Now, I'm going to go over an Apple trade that we did <laughs> a little bit ago that took all day. It was a good trade, but it did take a while to go. But most of the trades that we do, most of them are fast. They go quick. 
we did a trade last week i forget it was either wednesday or thursday where it went so so fast we were in and out in three minutes and again that's what i'm trying to do that's what i'm trying to look for every single day it's the consistency of applying the method and the direction and taking the position and getting in and out quick that's really going to pay you again nothing goes straight up and nothing goes straight down so if you can make a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars two thousand dollars in five minutes ten minutes fifteen minutes a half an hour you're safe you book the money you've got it you're done boom walk away enjoy the rest of your day trading is not about it's almost like less is more it's not about being a pig with every single solitary thing that you're doing because ultimately the more you trade the more trades you take and you're trading all day long for six and a half hours your accuracy level is going to go down it's just the way the odds are so i look at my my i look at trading as a job where i'm actually taking the trade and my job is to make money and be done and the faster i can be done the better so if i take a trade and I make money i'm done i don't sit there looking for trades all day long uh, you know for six and a half hours so if you look at trading as a job you're going to do a heck of a lot better than if you're just thinking oh i just made money in five minutes i'm just going to keep trading and keep trading and keep trading and keep trading i made that mistake very early on that was a huge mistake i would make money fast i started figuring it out and then i started making money fast and then i started giving it back and it really took me a long time for the discipline to get to that point where i stopped doing that it was difficult for me actually and what I ended up doing was then walking away and leaving my house and changing my workout pr a program where I worked out later because it was hard for me to stop. Trading, you have to look at it and you have to be serious and look at it like a job. Even if it's not a job, you have another job and it's a part-time thing you're doing and you're just making a little bit of money on the side. If you look at it like a job and take it seriously like a job, you will do so much better in the end. Any questions here so far about anything I just said? okay all right well let's talk about apple so i said we were talking about apple so apple closed here gap down again i'm going back so this is august 3rd to august 4th apple closed here gap down fell so on this particular day it was a friday we did a day train and then we also did puts and again a put is a short as an option okay now, this was the day trade. I'm going to go over this here. This was an advanced trader risk. Again, you can risk uh, more money. You can risk less money. You can take 100 shares. Unless you, if you have a retail account, you can take odd lots. But if you have a prop account, you can't. You would have to take 100 shares. It would be the smallest you could take. Anyways, the entry in this, and we're going to look at the chart in a minute, was 185.60. 1600 shares the risk was 30 40. again this is a trade on margin okay so you would have had to have a margin account to take this and if you're like oh my gosh i don't think i could have done that it's too expensive you could have bought a put i did call the 185 puts so you pick the one if i call the trade in the room you pick the one closest to the strike i did call the 185 puts on the options newsletter and again you could have done the 185 puts okay then we added took more of the position total shares was 3200 this took a while to go so i added average price was 195.40 exit was 182.50 this was a nice trade this is this was a huge trade actually i was in this trade i'm going to show you most of the day it fell into the close it was a friday the only reason i was in it all day is because it took all day for it to go and here's a 15 minute i just want to show you again here's the gap stock closed here gap down wiggled and jiggled and wiggled and jiggled this is the day of the fourth and here's all the money Boop. and it fell right there so you could have gotten a day trade in the morning you could have scalped and got out i did not i did not i waited to get paid in this i believed in the gap i liked the gap i was right i thought it would sell off it fell into the close again same thing with the put you could have bought the put in the morning the 185s you could have got out here or you could have held it into monday so this is a 15 minute in apple and again, I'm just showing you here, this was an example where it did take a little bit longer, but if I'm in something and I'm, I like it, and I like the gap and it rates well, I'll hold it if it didn't have a move yet. Now, we talked about the Tesla. We talked about the Tesla. We did this a couple of times. So this was on the first 
actually this is before the apple this was august 1st here here's the day stock close here gap down fell this is a day trade again if you do not want to do a day trade on margin you can buy a put you buy the closest put as close as you can you buy it at the strike or you buy something away from the strike okay we entered the day trade at 264.05 1200 shares we did an add in this at 264.40 we doubled up on this average price was 264.23 again momentum is what two dollars three dollars four dollar two three four it depends what the price of a stock is this is a move for tesla two and a half bucks three dollars that's a move again profit was five thousand nine hundred fifty two dollars this was on this day here so let's take a look at the one minute on the tesla again stock close here gap down fell boom again short it add get the drop boom and there it is so again we were talking about momentum this is it people boom that is a sell-off that is a sell-off that's momentum that's momentum to the downside again we're not scalping this for 10 cents, 5 cents, 25 cents. In something like this, if you're taking some a position in something like Tesla that costs this much, you have to make it worth your while. You've got to get the move. You've got to get you've got to get a move. You've got to get the momentum and you got to get it right as far as the direction too. I'm usually doing the weeklies. I'm usually doing the weekly option. So if it's a Friday, I'm not doing a Friday expiration. I'm doing a following Friday expiration. David's asking about the Apple trade. Anything that you would do, you have to look at the dates. I'm not doing it so tight that I'm giving myself the day. Okay. So if a trade is on a Friday, which Apple was, I'm doing for the following week. Now that doesn't mean I'm holding it to the following Friday. If it has a move in 24, 48 hours, I'm out. You could have got out of that trade the day I called it. You could have got out of it the following day. That Apple, though, you actually could have, just going back here, you actually could have held this into the last day of expiration, which was this past Friday. What was Friday the 11th? You actually could have, because look how far this was through the strike. This was down at 176 and change on Friday. That trade would have been profitable to exit on Friday. I don't suggest people did that. Why? Because you, you could have given it back. Remember, this is not swing trading. We're momentum trading. We're booking money. Remember I said this early? What's the purpose of trading? Making money. I have that slide in here somewhere. Let me find it. This is just a reminder. Here. I thought I had it in here. Here I do. You have one goal when you trade. You have one goal. That's it. Make money. Your goal is not, let me hold this to the end of time. That's not your goal. Let me get a piggy target in every trade. That's not your goal. Let me take this trade and make all the money back I ever lost since I started trading. No, you're going to lose. You have one goal, and that goal is to make money. Not to squeeze every penny out of everything. Your goal is to make money. And once you have accomplished that goal, you exit the trade, or you're going to get burned. The problem is... Let's go forward here. We're talking about the problem is that so many people are losing. So when they get in a good trade, they tend to hold it too long because they're like, oh my God, one trade's actually working. <laughs> if you're, if you have a lot of winners, you're not going to feel so much pressure on yourself to hold it and squeeze every penny out of it. You understand? Because you're like, oh, I'll get out of this. I'll make a thousand bucks. I'll take another trade and I'll make it. And you also won't have so much pressure on yourself when you lose. You take a trade, you lose. You say, oh, boom, I'll do another one. We lost today. We lost today. We, we shorted Tesla today. We got stopped. It didn't work. I'll make money tomorrow. Okay. So you have to understand that some trades will lose. But if you're winning more than you're losing, when you have a losing trade, it's not going to be the end of the world. And people hold winning trades too long and sometimes screw them up because of the fact that they lose so much. When they actually get in a winning trade, they, they're they like, oh my God, I'm, I don't know when I'm going to have another good one like this. I got to, uh, and they hold it too long and they mess it up. You can't mess around with that with options. You have an expiration date and you honestly can't mess around with that with day trades either. Why? Because you got to be on a contain trade by four. If I, if we did Tesla today, I got stopped. But if I had been in that trade all day and it hadn't have stopped, I would have killed it. 
I would have killed it wherever it was. I would have killed it with a loss, with a partial loss, with a break even, with a little bit of up. If I had not gotten stopped today in Tesla, I would not have said, well, I'm going to hold this overnight into a swing trade at two to one margin or cash. No, I would have killed it before four, whatever, wherever it was, but it didn't work anyways. We got stopped in the morning. So anyways, that is, you know, you have to be aware, okay, of what you're doing with the trade when you're up. Now here, here, here it is. Here it is. I, my assistant put this in here. Friday, August 4th. I called in the morning, 8.48 in the morning. It was way before the open. Boom. The 185 strikes for the 11th. There you go. So it was $1.75. It was priced well. And you had, you had all morning really to get into it. And so then it dropped. It was a huge trade. This was an exit, not the Friday, but the following week. I do not know what this was worth the last day. As I said, I didn't go back and look at it. After I get out of a trade and book the money, I never go back and look at it. I don't second guess myself. I'm happy this is a good trade. Why would you hold a trade if you were up this much? That would be crazy. That would be nuts. If you risked 1,050, you could have made 3,450 on this trade. That is getting in it on Friday. In which case, again, if you, if you didn't do the day trade, which I did, I did the day trade. So I was sitting here all day Friday. But if you said, uh, oh, this thing is not going to go, I'm going to go, go to work, go to do whatever. You get up Monday morning, it's selling off like a hot cake Monday. You say, oh, boom, great. I can get out of this today. Bing, bam, boom. And you get out of it. You're trading momentum. When the momentum comes in, you're looking to exit. That could happen the day that we call it. It could happen the second day. In an ideal world, it happens within 24 to 48 hours. If the trade goes negative, the first day I take it, I'm not killing it. Some people do. I don't do that. But if I have a week left, why would you kill it anyways? Okay. But don't think that it's going to keep falling every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you're going to get out of it just with more money on a Friday. No, 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 no. You're exiting trains into the momentum. When you get the momentum, when you take it, I don't care if you're going long or short. Okay. But again, in the case of this, it was a short. Okay. So short moves happen fast. I think that Apple move happened fast if you look at the bigger picture. Again, the market was sluggish that day if you go back and look at the fourth. So did that affect Apple, even though Apple was earnings? Probably. Apple it, you know, goes with the market. It's a market stock. But eventually it tanked. Eventually it did it. And that was a prime example where knowledge and information and understanding that gap and the gap rating would have helped you helped you make money in that trade. It would have helped you stay with the trade. Hold the trade in the afternoon, hold the trade into Monday because the quality of that gap and the rating of that particular gap was high. So I have a 26 point rating system. It's a sliding scale. The higher the rating, the better the gap, the bigger the target, the more money you're gonna make. You can do a day trade and an option in it or swing trade two or both, okay? So again, the reason I like to short, though, is because short moves happen very, very quickly. It's panic. Panic comes in. Panic is fear. Fear creates selling. Now, I have no idea where the market goes the rest of the week. Will I be surprised if we do not continue to rally? No. No, I won't. So, yeah, we, we rallied today. Big whoop. It's only Monday. Will I be surprised if we fall the rest of the week at some point? Could even be tomorrow. No, I will not. I will not. Because again, there is, you could, you could say, well, we have panic because of that. And people are afraid in the recession and interest rates and this, that, and the other thing. I get it. But the reality is when people see red, it does create panic. So you as an individual, as an intellectual, as someone that really wants to make a lot of money and be successful, successful at this, and wants to separate yourself from the regular everyday people that are trading, you're gonna say, wait a minute, this actually makes quite a bit of sense. And I think this is something that I think I can do. And it actually makes quite a lot of sense. Because again, getting good at something where you can take advantage of the sell-off and the panic, it's good for you, okay? It makes money for you. And again, we're not talking about a retirement account or making money in your retirement account or your IRA or things like that. This is income generation you're chunking it out you can buy a put and get out in a week and still be long in your ira or retirement account but you're taking advantage of that panic and the selling action that comes in for people when they're when they're when they're long okay 
and we've had a bearish start to August. So tomorrow, like I said, is August 15th. We've been selling off ever since the beginning of the month. We'll go over that here when we're, when we're done with this PowerPoint. I'll pull up the market at the end. How do I find the best shorts daily? How do I make the best picks? My goal every day is to find the best pick, whatever it is. So I have a rating system to do that. It's called the Golden Gap. It's a system that I devised myself over the course of three years. And I'm looking for institutional money in the gap. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap in the first place. It is the gap that is created in the pre-market or the post-market. So again, like the, like the apple I called way before the open. Okay, you would have gotten that trade to your email if you were trading options with me on the newsletter. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correction, correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. The SPY is a great example of that because, again, many, many traders are long the market right now. We have been rallying since the beginning of 2023, since January. Like, we're up for the year. If you go back all the way, seven and a half months, we're up for the year. So people are long. What if we don't continue the rally? So we got two weeks in August, then we got September, October, November, December. So we got four and a half months left in the year. Well, so what's gonna happen in the market? Either we're gonna flip, Rally, go up, go over the highs, make brand new all-time highs, and the QQQs and the SPY, and many stocks will too. Or what? We'll be sideways for four and a half months. That's not going to happen. That's absolutely not going to happen. We might be sideways for a couple of weeks, four weeks, five. We're not going to be sideways for four and a half months. Or what is the third option? We could sell off. We could fall. We could drop. We could drop and go sideways. We could go sideways, then drop. But if we start to drop, the chances of us making new highs by the end of the year are slim to none, which I thought maybe we could in the month of June, we rally, but I thought since the beginning of the year that we wouldn't be able to do it. But I'm telling you that again, people are along this market. They believe the market will make new highs soon, okay? You can look at the fundamental reasons and make an argument for both sides, bullish and bearish. That's neither here nor there for you. You are looking at the gaps. You were gonna look at the technicals. And that's how you're going to make the determination to take a trade. So I do that based on my Golden Gap 26 point checklist. It's a trading system that's based on common sense. Because when you think about it, you're like, oh gosh, this makes a lot of sense. You know, it makes sense that shorting would be something in particular that would give you a niche. Many traders go long. They prefer to go long. They don't know how to short. Or when they short, they do things that don't make sense. So again, you say, oh, if I can get good at this, I can see how I can make a lot of money. I can see how things sell off faster than they rally. Okay. And then it makes sense. Shorting gives me a niche. And the, all the people that I teach what I do. People get scared when they're in positions and they're selling off. So getting back to what I was saying about the market, how the market's been up since the beginning of the year, you see where I'm going with this. Again, I just told you three different scenarios for the market or you know, any of the market stocks that are out there. Apple, Microsoft, Netflix, all the things. If you don't know how to short, you will miss out if that in fact sets up that way. But you're missing out on any normal day, even if we continue rallying, even if we make a new high with the market, you're still gonna miss out because there are things that aren't gonna go with it. One of the reasons why I'm not for this market continuing, why I think it's a very different scenario in 2023, unlike prior years when I have traded, is that you're not seeing an overall broad-based rally in every single sector to go with the market. Well, number one, there's a problem still with the banks. A few banks look good, and some of them look like crap. You're not going to have this buy at brand new all-time highs without the financials. And if you've been following anything that's happening with the banking sector, you know that some of the small regional banks have gone under, and there will be more. There will be more that go under between now and the end of the year, unfortunately. Okay. But again, think about the common sense that makes sense about shorting. And then think about how it makes sense to get good at something like this too. How that could really benefit your trading. How you could really get the big momentum moves to that. And then think about what I'm saying if the market turns. What are you going to do? Keep going long? You're going to lose, lose, lose. And that is what happened in 2022 for many, many traders. You know, that were going long in 2022 when the market was selling off. Any questions here so far about anything I just said? Anyways, what if you have a small account? Can you still short? Yes, you can buy a put. 
You can open up a, an options account with $2,000 and buy a put. I would, I would not risk more than $500. I would risk like $200, $250. If you have two grand in an account, 2,500, something like that, you could buy one contract of something, okay? And some of the things we do are on the smaller side, but you can buy a put. A put is a short, so you can do options. <laughs> if you can't trade with a margin account, Options are a way to take advantage of the sell side of things. So again, a lot of people, when I call a short in the room, in the spy, they're, they, even if they're day trading with me on a regular basis, they're, they're buying the put close to the strike or away from the strike as close as they can because they do not want to spend the spies over $400 a share. They don't have the margin to get 500 shares maybe of the spy. You know, again, you get buying power from your broker. So people are doing options, but I'm doing options and day trades. Some of these have been priced very well. This was a big trade. We I call the 454 puts on the first. Let's take a look at it. This is a little bit after the open. 454. Oh, this was the Apple day. Here. So called those that there. $1.25, eight contracts would have been $1,000 for beginner risk, sold at six. Again, this followed through in the gap down then the following Monday, okay? You could have made $3,800 risking $1,000. You, where are you going to do that? Nowhere. You're not going to do that even in today's money markets. Even in the 5% money market, you're not going to get that kind of return on investment. So again, a lot of people say, well, I can't trade if I have a small account. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yes, you can. If you had $10,000 in an options account, you could have taken this trade. And you could have made then 40% almost of your cash. And then all of a sudden you're up to 13.8. And then you could take another trade with 1,000. And then you're up to 15. And that's how you build it. I was talking to someone earlier today. I said, you've got to get your account up. Take it, chunk it, get in, get out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. She's holding things too long. Take it, book it. Get in, get out, boom, $200, $300, $400, $300, Again, the, the newsletter is an active letter. It, it, I'm calling a good amount of trades. You may not even be able to do all the trades, but the whole point is, again, this is momentum trading. It's not holding it forever. This is, you're not, this is not your IRA. You're taking it, getting the momentum, getting out. You can open up at a retail brokerage firm. Yes, you should be able to open up an options account with $2,000. That is the minimum requirement. Yes. Most of them allow that. You can call each one individual and find out, but that is what most of them will allow. I would set it up as a cash account so you're not flagged as a margin account. In order to have a margin account, you need 25 grand. If you set up an options account as a cash account, whether you're 2,000, 3,000, 5, then you're not gonna get flagged. And what do I mean flagged? Where if you take the trade and get out, if you take two trades and get out the same day. Again, if you're really active, you gotta set it up as a cash account if you're under 25 grand. Good questions. Let's look at Tesla. Again, this is expensive to do on margin. So we did options with this, some people are doing these 265s we called i called this in the morning on the first okay the first was oh that was the day that here close here gap down fell boom gap down again the next day so i called it was five dollars one contract would have been 500 bucks okay you would have needed to be able to risk at least 500 dollars to do it this was a nice trade again just going to the daily so again i'm Calling this before the open, the 265s, I'm right there, falls, boom. You see where this is, take it over, how this fell through the strike. So the momentum came in on the day, and then in the follow through, and the gap down in the following day. And actually could have held this a little bit more, but it expired on the 4th. So again, if I call a trade on a Tuesday, you know, you've got less than a week. You've got to watch your timing. Remember, take it, get the move, get out. Take it, get the momentum, get out. Again, if the momentum comes in the day that I call it, get out the day I call it, you know? 
Anyways, this was a nice trade. Return of S, 180%. Again, this is an advanced trader risk. You could risk more than this, but it's the idea where you would have made nine points of the five that you risked. Okay, nice, nice, nice trade. So what should you expect to earn? I think one-to-one -one is good, but many trades that we're doing are more than that, whether they're day trades or whether they're options. If you can't watch your trade, I say put a sell order an option at 50%. If you really can't, you can't even look at it. You can't even look at a chart. You can't look at targets. You can't look at anything. Buy it at a dollar into the open. Put a sell order at a buck fifty. Walk away. If it fills, it fills. It's a day order. It's a cancel. It'll cancel out if it doesn't fill. If you can watch, you're looking for targets. You're trying to get them to 100%. If it doesn't go, you're in it overnight. Fine. You're in it. See if it goes the next day. Okay. And again, our day trades were in and out very, very quickly. But the reigning system looks at 26 points. This is what you'd learn from me on the daily chart of a stock. I have a range of people that are trading with me. Everybody in the room has done the class. That's a benchmark to join the trading room to do the day trades. On the options newsletter, there's no prerequisites. You can sign up for the options newsletter and you don't ever have to have taken my class. If you do take my class, I think you will do better trading options. You will know why I made the pick and you should be rating the gap yourself. The rating system is a checklist. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock to read the direction correctly to know what stock to short and when, okay? So that is the difference. And again, think about what I said about having a positive attitude because it's very, very important. You need a positive attitude. It's gonna get you through the days where you have a loss, the days you make a mistake or the days that the market's hard. I have those days too but I easily get over it because I've been doing this for so long. And not only that, my confidence level is very, very high. My confidence level is high and my conviction in what my do with my system is high. So I know that the next good one will come around again. And this is where the proper education really can help you. The problem is that so many people have paid for classes and they haven't learned how to trade, but that's, that's, that's the breaks. You go, like I'm trying to find somebody right now to fix a piece of furniture for me. What do I do? I call this person, I get a quote, then I talk to this person, I get an idea, and then I'm gonna have to hire somebody. I'm gonna have no idea if they're gonna do a good job or not, and if they come and do it, I have to pay them. I have to make the best decision I can to hire this person to fix my piece of furniture, which is damaged and I want it fixed. I can't fix it myself. I don't know what I'm doing. I have to pay someone to do it, and they're gonna come to my house and they're gonna touch the furniture, and hopefully they're gonna fix it and not make it worse, but they could. This is, this is life. You have to hire people and trust in people if you don't know what you're doing. It doesn't matter if it's trading, it's anything, anything at all. It's just like uh, I moved and I, I had to hire a cleaning lady. You have no idea how many different cleaning services I have hired and fired in New York since I've been here. Like where they've broken stuff or this thing or that thing. Like, and again, I'm just like, I just want to get with one good person and I'll stay with that person. Like I'm very loyal when I find someone that I hire. It could be whatever I hire them for. It's finding the good people. It is not easy to find good people to hire for something that you need help with. It doesn't matter what it is. From furniture, to trading education, to trading subscriptions, to doing options, to cleaning ladies. It is the same across the board. This is life, people. And when people say this thing, that thing, you can't do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. I mean, you can, you can try, but it's gonna take you a heck of a lot longer. It's the same thing with me. I can clean my house every week by myself. I don't wanna do it. I have other things to do. I'm gonna make more money spending time trading in the hour that I can trade and make money in the market and pay someone to come in and clean my house. It's gonna take three and a half hours. So you see, it's just, you, you break it down and say, I have to hire somebody because I don't know what I'm doing and I need help. And that's what it is. But this is just the same thing with life. It's just the way that life is with anything that you do. But anyways, getting back to trading, take calculated risks, not risk for risk's sake when you trade. So think about what you're doing. Do the good ones, do the apples, do the Teslas, do the spy. Don't just take pot shots at things for no reason. And again, that's why it's dangerous when people go into these Reddit chat rooms and they're following strangers and they're taking ideas from people but they don't know why they're following the trade. There was no strategy backing it up. And again, create a plan of action to achieve your financial goals, whatever amount of money that is you need. I say start slow. $1,000 a week, $1,500 a week. Do that for a week. Do that for two weeks. Do it for a month. $1,500 a week after one month is what? 
oh, you're like, oh, I'm up six grand. Did you make six grand trading last month? Again, people will say, oh my God, I wanna make 15 grand, I wanna make 20. Just make six first, then make 10, then make 20. You know, you have to start somewhere, particularly if you're not doing well and you're losing. You gotta see yourself going up the ladder where you're making progress. But if you come and take my class, we'll learn the 26 point checklist. It measures gaps for rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. A big move in the day, early confirmation of the bias on the move between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential, which is of course what you want. So the meat and potatoes of what I do is the rating system. That is what you'll come and learn with me if you want to learn it. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. The checklist tells you what to trade when and in what direction. The 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. It's all I do. It doesn't matter if I'm doing an option. It doesn't matter if I'm doing a day trade. It is based on the rating system. One strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and they fail all the time. Again, getting back to what it's saying, this is based on technical analysis, not fundamentals, because you don't always have them match up. HD could have a fabulous earnings report tomorrow, and yet it could cap down and fall off a cliff, and we may short it, and it may work. So you can't look at the fundamentals. Learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps because gaps tell you so much, so much information. I prep in the morning in the pre-market to decide what I'm doing. And, and, and that's when I make all the decisions. So I don't have to rush. I'm not making decisions in the fly. I'm figuring out the morning and the gap. And if you want to do this, you, the reason for you doing it has to be to make money. It could be small, it could be medium, it could be large. But if you're doing this and losing, ask yourself if you have a strategy. If you can't explain what your strategy is, you probably don't have one and that could be why you're losing. You don't know why you're taking the trade. You don't know why you're going long. You don't know why you're shorting, okay? Anyways, getting back to the checklist, this is, it's a rating system. It's 26 points. I'm looking for 20 points or more. If I get a gap that rates 20 points or more, I'm taking it in the direction of the gap, so I'm shorting it. If Apple gaps down, it rates 21 points, boom. We're gonna do a put, we're gonna short it as a day trade, we're gonna do it. If it rates 15 points, I'm not doing it at all. I'm not gonna even touch it. And again, I'm not reversing the gap direction. So the class that I teach once a month is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a class on how to find, pick and play professional bearish gaps. Now, I'm doing a back to school special this week. The class is this coming weekend. I already have people signed up, but if you want to do this class, you can still sign up. I still have spots available. The deadline is Friday. This is a special class because I'm doing a bonus day three. The class is usually starting Sunday. I'm doing a bonus day three on the Monday where we'll trade in the morning, and then we're gonna pick it up in the afternoon from 11 to two and do three hours of gap ratings. The Saturday and Sunday is nine to five. Again, everything's Eastern time zone. Monday is gonna be a bonus day where we're gonna look at live gaps that happened on that Monday and rate them, which is a good, good exercise to do. So this also includes a trading room free for one year and the options newsletter free for one year with the cost of the tuition, which is $69.99. It's always $69.99. You get the bonus of the room, the newsletter for one year, and then the bonus day three. So these are the class dates. These are the hours. If you want to sign up, you will email me for sign up forms. Now, does anyone have any questions about anything at all? Anything you want to go back? Any charts you want to look at? Anything you want to talk about? Any questions like David's about trading options or anything like that? You must email me for the forums if you want to sign up. If you want a trial to the trading room, you can email me and I will send you that for this week if you would like to do a trial. Again, the room is a day trade room. It's not an options room. The newsletter is options, where the options are emailed to you in live time. The day trading room is where you will come in and I'm calling the trades live in the room. I'm saying where to take it, where to put the stop, and where to get out. Paulette, I know you're new. Do you have any questions? I see some familiar faces and some new people. I'm really looking forward to the fall. I'm looking forward to the fall for so many reasons. I think it's. I think we are going to turn to the market. That's number one. We've had a good start to the month of August too here for shorts. 
Um, I'm looking forward to fall because it's going to be my first fall watching the leaves turn in Central Park. So I think it's going to be beautiful. And um, I'm finally getting situated in my new apartment. So I'm really looking forward to fall for many, many reasons. And it's going to be here before you know it. It's going to be here before you know it. So this is a good class to come in, take, learn, get prepped and ready to go for the fall. Again, some kids are already back to school. I have a friend whose kids went back last week and some kids are going back next week. It's back to school for everybody. Education is an important thing about what I said. And again, here is my email. If you think of anything, you can always email me here at Melissa at the stock All right. Have a good night, everyone.